Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Captain Patriotic. How are all you folks doing today? As you'll recall last time, we talked about the second of three people who have the distinct honor of being Medal of Honor recipients from Arkansas during the Vietnam War. That's right, everybody. There have only been three, three individuals who have been awarded the Medal of Honor for service during the Vietnam War. And today, we have the honor of talking about the last of those three individuals. If you have missed the last couple of episodes, please go check those out below. They're very unique stories in that matter. Now, today's presentation on that third and final individual is a very unique one, to say the least. The person that I'm talking about, folks, with that distinct honor is none other than U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Major John L. Canley. Now, what is so unique about Sergeant Major Canley was that originally he was not awarded the Medal of Honor. He actually participated in the legendary battle at Way City during the Tet Offensive of early 1968. Now, he bared a bunch of obstacles and gunfire and all that, but for his actions, he was originally only awarded the Navy Cross, which is still a high and distinct honor, mind you, but it wasn't near the prestige that the Medal of Honor holds today in our minds and in the military, of course. John Canley not only holds the distinction of, of being the only Marine Corps recipient of the Medal of Honor for Vietnam for Arkansas, but what you guys may not know either is that he is right now the only living Medal of Honor recipient from Arkansas to date. That's right, guys. He is the only living Medal of Honor recipient from Arkansas right now. So let's not wait any longer, folks. Let's go dive on into this wonderful history. Sergeant Major John L. Canley was originally born on February 1st, 1938, in Caledonia, Arkansas. Now, not only is he the last living Medal of Honor recipient from Arkansas, and one of the few U.S. Marines who have ever served from Arkansas to receive the Medal of Honor, but what makes him unique altogether is that the Union County native became the 300th U.S. Marine in U.S. history to ever be awarded this high honor. Now that's saying something folks. He is only one of 300 Marines to have ever served his or her country to be awarded this medal. That is impressive my folks. Now what you guys may not know about myself is that at one time when I was in high school I was so close and I almost enlisted in the Marines myself. In fact, I wanted to be one of those combat videographers on the front lines that would capture all the enemy firefights and footage and all that, and basically I wanted to be a PR person for the Marine Corps. Anyway, now back to Canley. Canley, believe it or not, has a very unique history in his family. It's been one of military service. In fact, he had a lot of uncles and grandparents that served our armed forces and much of it in segregated tr units and all that too but what's very unique about this individual is that Canley actually enlisted in the Marines when he was 15 years old that's right he was only 15 years old and in fact he left Little Rock, Arkansas just before his 16th birthday for his overseas duties. Now, how did he get away with this? He used his older brother's information and paperwork in order to enlist in the Marines. Now, what is so cool about that, basically he forged and lied about his age to get into the military, but what he ends up doing though is pretty cool because after he enlists, he is shipped off to serve in Korea, very little few last days of the Korean War and afterwards during the occupation. He also served in Japan and then was called to active duty to serve in the Vietnam War. 
Now, he would stay in the Marine Corps for almost 30 years until October of 1981, whenever he retires as a sergeant major. Now, the Medal of Honor recognizes his individual heroic service between January 31st and February 6th, 1968, which is considered by most to be one of the first days of the infamous Tet Offensive, which basically was a turning point in the war in Vietnam against the Americans, to say the least. But if you want to know more details about the Tet Offensive and all that, please go see my History of the Vietnam War videos. I go into extensive detail about the history and the particular battles of Vietnam. It was during this week-long period that, at the time, Gunnery Sergeant Canley showed his distinct honor and prowess in the military and a lot of valor during this intense fighting. It was then that Gunnery Sergeant Canley and other members of Company A, 1st Battalion, 1st Marines of the 1st Marine Division came under heavy and intense attack from the enemy on a highway that was leading toward the city of Wei which for those of you that aren't familiar, Wei actually used to be the capital of Vietnam. It was a sacred ground and for the longest time people, our forces in particular, did not have the permission to demolish this, the town and the buildings because it's considered sacred ground and all that. So originally the, the fighting was very intense. It was always intense, but it was very methodical like we couldn't just go in and blow up the whole place and get rid of the enemy. No, that was not on the table to begin with. But anyway, according to Canley's citation, despite being wounded in these engagements, Gunnery Sergeant Canley repeatedly rushed across fire-swept terrain to carry his wounded Marines to safety, and after his commanding officer was severely wounded, Gunnery Sergeant Canley took command and led the company into Way City. Now at Way City, caught in deadly crossfire from enemy machine gun positions, he set up a base of fire and maneuvered with a platoon in a flanking attack and eliminated several enemy positions in the city. Now retaining command of the company for three solid days, he led attacks against multiple enemy fortified positions while routinely braving enemy fire to carry his wounded marines to safety. Now it was on February 4th that he led a group of marines into an enemy occupied building in Wei. Now he moved into an open position to draw fire where he located the enemy, eliminated the threat, as well as expanded the company's hold on the building room by room. They basically were having to go room by room sweeping through all the buildings in the city because the enemy would hide in rooms all over the place and sometimes they would be hidden so much that the enemy wouldn't see them. That's why they had to go sweep room to room and all that just like they've had to do in Iraq and Afghanistan. But anyway, it was during that time that Gunnery Sergeant Canley then gained the position above the enemy strong point and started dropping large satchel charges basically it was a, a patchel or satchel full of enemy grenades and they did that in order to withdraw the enemy out in the open so they could take them out pretty easily. Now on February 6th 1968 during a fierce firefight at a hospital compound Gunnery Sergeant twice scaled a wall in f full view of the enemy to carry wounded Marines to safety. It's by his undaunted courage, selfless sacrifice, and unwavering devotion to duty that Gunnery Sergeant Canley reflected the great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. Now, what is unique about all this engagement is that one of the Marines who fought alongside Canley and died in battle Alfredo Freddy Cantu Gonzalez was actually posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor in 1969. Now at the time that this guy gets the Medal of Honor, Canley 
originally was awarded the Navy Cross, which is basically considered the second highest award for valor that anyone in the Marine Corps, Navy, or U.S. Coast Guard could receive for valor on the battlefield. Now, at the time, Canley was okay, was all right with the award. He didn't think anything of it, but the men that served under him thought he should have received the top honor to begin with. And basically, after his service in the in way and in Vietnam in general, many of the Marines that he served with lobbied and went to bat for him to get this prestigious honor. Well, the thing was, because Canley's heroic actions occurred about 50 years ago or so, or so he initially didn't qualify to receive the Medal of Honor after his service in Vietnam. That was until people who served with him in Washington asked officials to make an exception for him because those people knew him personally and how much depth he went to go to bat for his Marines and to fight alongside him and everything. It was a few years ago, in fact, that all this started to surface again, about 2016, 2017 or so. Now, after hearing about Canley's heroism during Vietnam, his congresswoman from the state that he lives in now, California, U.S. Representative Julie Brownlee asked the Department of Defense to review his case. Now, Representative Bromley sponsored a private bill in Congress to upgrade Canley's Navy Cross to the Medal of Honor. Now, it took a little bit of time, but it actually succeeded because on December 21st, 2017, the House of Representatives waived the original five-year limit for the award of the Medal of Honor. See, that was the catch during those days, was that whoever whoever was eligible for the Medal of Honor had to be recommended by his NCO or commanding officer that was above him, and they could only report the actions within five years of the date that it actually happened. Well, of course, nothing happened of it. People didn't report it. People didn't think anything of it until years and years later. However, that all changes when the House of Representatives waives the five-year limit for the Medal of Honor and the Senate quickly ran suit with that idea. It would take an act of Congress to carve out an exception. Well, Representative Brownlee promptly offered the legislation to Congress, which was signed into law on January of 2018. She was really exceptionally touched by written testimonials from the Marines who served alongside with Canley. And so there was one particular individual that said, these men call him a giant of a man. They were insistent that this gets pursued because he was so worthy of this honor. Now it's noted too that Canley served multiple tours of duty in Vietnam, not just one. In fact, Brownlee says that after his first tour, he was offered a desk job but refused it. He said, no, my place is in the battlefield and that's where I want to be. When they say he's a Marine's Marine, that's what they're talking about. He is a very, very proud Marine and we are very, very proud of him. Now, John Legato, a Marine who served with Canley, helped to lead the effort to get Canley the Medal of Honor. In fact, in a video posted to johncanley.com, Legato said the Marines had complete confidence in his leadership. In fact, he says that during firefights, when we'd all be hugging Mother Earth, he'd be standing up directing us, and as a result, he appeared to be fearless because he was fearless and we all considered him totally, completely, and absolutely without fear. It took a miracle to get this guy upgraded to the Medal of Honor. Well, thankfully that was the case. Everybody was going to bat for him, it seemed like. In fact, it was Secretary of Defense Jim Mathis who recommended the upgrade for the Navy Cross to the Medal of Honor to President Trump. 
Well, it took a little bit of time and talking about it, but President Trump officially approved the award in July of 2018. And it was on October 17, 2018, where President Trump presented Sergeant Major John L. Canley with the Congressional Medal of Honor. Now, the Medal of Honor was not the only award that Canley received for his time in the Marine Corps. He's actually received a bunch of medals and rec honors and recognition for his 28 years of service in the Marines. Now, in addition to being awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, Canley was also awarded a Bronze Star with Combat Distinguishing Device, a Purple Heart, a Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal with Combat Distinguishing Device, a Combat Action Ribbon, a Navy Presidential Unit Citation with three Bronze Stars, a Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal with seven Service Stars, a Marine Corps Expeditionary Medal with one Service Star, a National Defense Service Medal with Service Star, an Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, the Vietnam Service Medal with nine Service Stars, the Korean Defense Service Medal, a Navy Sea Service Deployment Ribbon with two service stars, the Vietnam Gallantry Cross with two silver stars, the Vietnam Gallantry Cross Unit Citation, the United Nations Medal, the Vietnam Campaign Medal, as well as both a Rifle and Pistol Expert Marksman's Badge. Now, if you ask me, this guy was well overdue for the Medal of Honor. I mean, he truly put himself on the line and went well and above the call of duty to protect his fellow marines that much is certain and it, a guy like this genuinely deserves recognition like this i mean he was a well-respected marine in his unit and rightfully so i mean even from a young age from reports that i read he was a very likable guy and is a very likable person he was very respected even as young as he was at the time of his service and everything Everybody just loved the guy, and who could blame him? He's a very good and very respectful guy. Well, as according to records, he today he is living in Burbank, California, and is the proud father of three. Now, thank you guys for tuning in to this lovely conclusion on Arkansas Vietnam Medal of Honor recipients. But please, stick around for next time, where I'm going to start a tiny mini-series on the most decorated individuals within each branch of the U.S. military. So please, feel free to stick around for all this good stuff coming up in the future. Well guys, I appreciate you tuning in, and please stick around for next time. Thank you.